Michael Milton, welcome to the best of the best. You're one of Australia's great sporting champions with a, a long list of accomplishments in Paralympic skiing, downhill skiing, cycling, triathlon. What is it about being an elite sportsman that's taught you about yourself? Oh, there's, there's so many lessons there in terms of how my mind and body works under the ultimate pressure situation when you've worked towards a goal for four years and you've got this one opportunity and, and the pressure is on. Um, it's taught me about the, the balance of life um, in terms of, of the physical side and balancing that with other areas of life in family and work and, and having some fun. Um, and I guess it's just such an all-consuming passion for me to continue my involvement in sport on many different levels from uh, still being an athlete, um, still obviously being a, a passionate supporter and, and loving watching um, different sports on television and, and learning about people and, and how they react to me is probably the biggest lesson that can be learned from sport. You talk about balance. How difficult is it to maintain balance when you are an elite sports person? I think it's relatively easy, you know, when you see a professional athlete in their 20s and there's not a lot of other commitments in their life. They can go to a training session in the morning and then go home, have a bite to eat, sit on the PlayStation, have a nap, go to training in the afternoon and, and that's their life and it's a, a fantastic lifestyle for somebody in, in that age group. As you mature as an athlete into your 30s, um, firstly your body needs more recovery time, secondly there's work commitments, family, kids, other things going on. So it really does um, stretch that balance and, and really um, makes you work a lot more efficiently and makes you um, realise how good you had it when you were younger. From a young age, you know, sports played a key role in your life. You know, as a young man, you lost your leg to, to cancer. What role did sport play in, in helping you cope with that? I think sport for any person with a disability, and when you look at the evolution and history of the Paralympic Games, it started because there were wounded soldiers who needed rehab and needed things to do, and, and sport was an obvious choice to do that. And for me, it was an important part of things. At the start, just to... Um, give me a sense of, of speed and freedom. Most kids get it by running around the playground, et cetera, et cetera. But when you can't run as fast as your peers, you really lack those basic human needs. And for me, I remember the first day skiing, being able to ski down a mountain with gravity, pushing you as fast as you felt comfortable, to have the freedom to choose where you went and what you wanted to do. It was, um, it was a real eye-opener for me. And, and I guess the start of it was just a love for skiing and, and the competitive side of it gave me some opportunities to actually ski more and that was, uh, that was a really strong motivator for me. As time went on it became about not just skiing or, or going fast, it became about the competitive side and being better than everybody else. But and it certainly was an important part of, of my childhood and growing up. Certainly. And that competitiveness, what role did the Australian Institute of Sport play in, in helping you to become more competitive at, at, at a global level? I think at a young age I was on, coming from Canberra and having some access to the facilities at the AS was fantastic. But when I got my first scholarship I started to understand the, the next level of sport, going from that, that childhood passion and the, the amateur level and then starting to be taught about professional sport and how to look for those little gains in terms of the physical side of things, in terms of your mental approach um, and uh, it certainly played a, a big part in helping teach me how to become a professional athlete and how to expect the best out of myself. And when you think back to that day when you got your first scholarship, do you have memories of that time? Yeah, absolutely. It was, a, it was a really exciting time to be able to have access to the AS, to be able to start to train my sharing, my training sessions. Because as an athlete, as a skier, the on-snow part was all taken care of, but the, the fitness side of things and the off-snow side of things, you're pretty much on your own. And it's an important lesson to learn that things can be so much more motivating in a group. Mm -hmm. And to be able to come to the AS, share those group sessions, come and do some sessions with the track and field squad um, and, and the social side of things. It was certainly a big help to me in that way as well. You've been around the AIS for a long time. How have you noticed a change <laughs> over the years? Oh, I think, um, you know, everything... I guess from a, from a you know, um, 18 and 9 year old, 19 year old coming here for the first time, everything looks a bit bigger. Um, understanding how things work, there's certainly been an evolution here and, and a, a deeper understanding 
from my point of view of, of what goes on and, and how things work. But in the end, there's still that same family atmosphere of everybody knowing each other and, and different short sports and, and different areas of sport, sharing their knowledge and getting together. So for me, it's always a, a fantastic place to, to drive in and, and feel that family atmosphere. How would you summarise the contribution that the AIS makes to Australian sport? I think uh, you know it, it makes a contribution at so many different levels from some of the sports programs that focus on, on the young developing side of sport, some of the other programs focusing on the elite team and, uh, and again that, that sharing model of, of all the disciplines and everybody getting together to work together and uh, I think it, it contributes on so many levels and continues to do that. In some ways it's, it's not super visible, particularly in those sports that focus on youth but I still think it plays a, a really valuable part in that, that knowledge sharing um, throughout all sports in, in the in Australian landscape. There are probably kids all over Australia watching this particular interview and looking at Michael Milton and his record. What advice or encouragement would you give to the kids out there who might be thinking that, you know, the Paralympics could be for me? Oh, you know, sport, sport is fun. And uh, in the end, particularly at that junior level, but certainly all through my career, that was my motivation to be able to have fun and, and enjoy myself. And uh, it's a fantastic opportunity. It's a fantastic way to learn lessons in life. And, uh, you know, I'd be encouraging any young person, whether they have a disability or not, if you've got a passion for a particular sport, then follow that and test it and see how far you can take it and really challenge yourself to, to push yourself and be um, as good as you can be at it. And if that takes you to uh, your local club championship or, or second grade or Paralympic or Olympic level, uh, in the end, you can have a lot of fun doing that. Michael, thanks for joining us. Thank you.